Hi, Ali Shakoy here from Agile TV and today we're going to take a quick look at what Agile is. But before we do that, how about we look at what Agile isn't? Now, first of all, contrary to popular belief, Agile is not a methodology and that will be much more clear in a moment. Neither is it a silver bullet to all your problems or you know the solution to everything that's wrong with your projects. Yes, it is a solution and it will if implemented properly the chances are they will give you better outcomes on your projects however it's not the silver bullet it's not going to solve everything if anything what it might do is unearth some underlying cultural or you know other type of kind of um, issues within your organization but as a result by knowing what they are it gives you a starting point to actually go about solving them and finally unfortunately Agile is not for everybody. There's a number of things that you need to go through and check out and look at to see whether or not it's right for you and your organization. Uh, but for those who are using it, the majority of them are getting great outcomes and seeing that things are working for them are much better. Now, here's what Agile is. It is a umbrella term, and this is the key to it. It's an umbrella term that is used to kind of collect together a number of various methodologies. Remember before I said that Agile isn't a methodology? That's the reason why. It's an umbrella term that's used to refer to a number of different Agile related methodologies such as Scrum, Kanban, XP, Lean, you name it. So that's really what it is. It's also a proven approach for delivering value to your customers early and giving you a higher return on investment. Think about it. With the old waterfall approach, you have to wait for however long, maybe a year, two years, before you've actually got a tangible product that you can hand over to your client or customer and say that the project's done. By then, a lot of things have changed, uh, or you're waiting, for, you know, you've been putting the money in, but you're not getting anything out. And, and there's a chance that by the time you actually deliver what you're delivering, it's of no value to anybody at that stage. However, with an agile approach, because you're delivering smaller pieces early, you're delivering little bits early, it means you can get feedback in, it means you can also, the, you know, the customer, the client can actually start using it, and as a result, you can start getting a return on investment. Think about Apple, for example. What are they on now? They're on the, I mean, I, I'm a Blackberry type guy, but I believe they're on the what? The, the iPhone 5 or iPhone 4? Number of iterations, they've been delivering it little by little, little by little, changing it as they go along, but they're already making money from it, get a return on investment, and they still haven't, in their eyes, made the ultimate iPhone yet. So, look forward to seeing many more of those out there. But, here's the key thing about it, and here's the gel which brings it all together. Agile is a mindset. It's a mindset that goes beyond our work, and our roles, and our projects. It's a mindset that when we adopt it, will have positive impact on not just our work life and our business but also on our personal life and here's why you see the agile mind values people and interpersonal relationships now one thing you know for sure is that in order for us to get anything in this life it's gonna have to come through somewhere another person there's nothing that we're gonna get in this life that's not gonna involve somebody else that's the, that's the reality of it both in our work lives and our personal lives so doesn't it make sense that we adopt the skills, we develop the skills that are going to enable us to be able to interact with people better and as a result get the outcomes that we want? Of course it does. And that's the thing about Agile. It does away with, you know, it doesn't necessarily place so much emphasis on the processes, but recognizes that the key to everything, key to every project, key to anything that you want to get is the people who are involved and therefore by developing the skills into personal relationships we can actually get more of the outcomes we want and like we said that is something that carries over into our personal relationships too it's also flexible and adapts to change now you already know that the only constant in life is change many people resist it, resist it but that's the reality things change and you already know that we're living in a fast paced world and that the businesses that are going to succeed in today's fast paced marketplace are those who are flexible, who can adapt to change and bring something to the market quickly. We already spoke about Apple but just look around you know you see that many of those top companies are the ones who are flexible they're looking at to see what's happening in the market and they're adapting to it. We're already going back to Apple again and like I said I'm not an Apple -er. I don't even have any Apple devices but let's look at the, 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 the iPad 
they first were one of the first to bring out the tablets and now a number of other people in the market have responded and bringing out tablets as well so it's all about being flexible seeing what's happening seeing what your competition is doing seeing what's happening around you and being able to respond to that that's the key to obviously you know success in business uh, and our projects that we're delivering better have some business value but if we step aside and also look at our personal lives, we'll also see how important flexibility and adapting to change is. For example, it's the person who's most flexible about going after their goal who's most likely to see it. And another thing that we can see in our personal lives where flexibility is so key and very important is with young children. For example, if you're like me and you've seen a young child ask for a parent for something that they want or an adult for something that they want, you already know that they are, tend to be much more flexible in their approach. So for example, they might start, can I have a cookie? No. Please can I have a cookie? No. I want a cookie. No. I want a cookie. No. I want a cookie. A cookie. And then usually it gets to the point that we as adults, because we only have a limited number of ways of saying no, we give in. We just say, okay, here's the cookie. And that's because that young person is flexible in their approach. They have so many different ways of going about getting the outcome that they want. And that is something that we recognize it's of importance. We see the value in it. So it's great to also be able to go with that as well. And also just before I close on that point, we also need to recognize that, as we already said, we live in a fast-paced world today. And it means that those who resist change are the ones who are going to end up being stressed out because they're wanting things to stay the way that they used to be. But the reality is things are going to change. So doesn't it make sense from that point of view to be flexible and be able to adapt to change because that means we go with the flow as opposed to resisting it. Also the Agile Mind is collaborative by nature. As we said before, you know, the, we're always going to need to interact with people. Everything that we want is going to have to come through somebody else. And one of the keys to be able to get other people to do what we want or give us what we want or need at any given time is to be able to get them to want to do that. And as a result, that comes about from us being collaborative with them and be prepared to work with them to create win-win outcomes, to create mutually beneficial outcomes where everybody wins, everybody gets the benefit out of it. And as a result, what you'll find is that when you create an environment like that, be it at home, be it in our workplace, on our projects, then what happens is people are much more motivated. We don't have to force people. People are motivated to do what we need to do as a collective to create the outcomes because everybody can see what they're getting out of it. And finally, the Agile Mind is disciplined and focused. Now, you might have heard it said by many people that the Agile approach is undisciplined. Well, I'm here to tell you right now that that's so not true. Yeah, we know that there's those cowboys out there who are pretending to do Agile uh, and using it as an excuse for just, you know, kind of throwing stuff out there in an undisciplined way. But those are not real. They're not, they're not, not Agilists. They're not people with an Agile mind. But the real Agile mind is disciplined and focused because it knows the outcome that it's intended to get. It's got a very clear objective. And it also is approaching it from the point of view of saying, well, I'm not going to come from in a very, that I'm forced into a structure and therefore there's only one way of achieving this. It enables creativity, innovation, and looks at different ways of about achieving the outcome they want. Remember what we said about flexibility? It's flexible in its approach, but it still keeps its eye on the outcome that it's looking for. And as a result, it recognizes it needs to be disciplined in terms of doing things at the right time, in the right way, to be able to create those outcomes. So from that point of view, the Agile mind and the Agile approach is disciplined and focused. So there you have it, just a quick look at what Agile is uh, and as we can see, not only does it give us a greater return on investment in terms of our project, it transfers and gives us skills and gives us benefits that we can actually transfer into our own personal life. Let's face it, we're talking about projects, we're talking about personal life but the reality is they're all kind of entwined think about it yeah we want to be able to do better and deliver better projects and as a result we want to get a better return on investment for our company we want to get recognition in our role you know we want to add value if you're like me you want to be able to add in value to your clients to you to who your employer whoever it is you want to become somebody of value and, and you want to make sure that the projects that you're working on give you better outcomes you also want greater responsibility. You might be the type of person like myself as well who's interested in getting more responsibility. By proving that you can give greater value, you want to be able to be able to get greater responsibility and as a result, hopefully get paid more. Remember we were talking about mutually beneficial outcomes, collaborativeness, of course. If you're adding value on it, it makes sense that 
those that you're adding value to are going to value you more and therefore pay you more because you know we get paid what we're valued right so but looking beyond that looking into our personal lives the reality is you know if you're anything like me you want to be able to spend more time with your family you want to be you know in a financially secure situation you want to be able to live life and enjoy life be it going on holiday going you know doing whatever it was giving to charity doing all those type of things so as you see what we do at work really is very closely entwined to our real bigger dreams in life and that's what we're talking about here we're talking about adopting an agile mind which allows us to be able to do those things in our work environment which will have the positive impact in our work environment and also in our personal lives so that we can live the life that we've always dreamed of it's Adi Shakoya from Agile TV and in the next one in all of our blogs we'll be looking at all of these areas in much more detail looking at the skills and the kind of things that we can use to be able to do more at work on our projects so that we can get better outcomes in all areas of our life take care speak to you soon